Hey, Mixies! Welcome to Mixed Thoughts, a grooming podcast. It's your groomer bestie here, Ciara, coming to chat with you about the ins and outs of grooming and entrepreneurship. We'll dive into a mixture of topics with stories from myself and friends near and far. Let's navigate this journey together. All right. I can't believe this is the first episode. Oh, my sweet baby Jesus. And I'm doing this late night, y'all. So bear with me. This is going to be so organic. It's not even funny. Uh, I've got my notes just in case. All right. Let's start, shall we? Oh my gosh. Do I look good? (laughs) This is so funny. Why am I nervous? All right. Let's just do this, right? All right. What's up, Mixies? Welcome to Mixed Thoughts, a grooming podcast. I cannot believe I just literally said that. This is crazy. It's been a long time coming because I feel like I've been trying to do this podcast since 2021, and it's 2024 at the time that I'm making this video right now. So what a journey, man. I have been in the YouTube streets, so... I have been starting my, I've been starting YouTube, not the podcast, because I'm just starting the podcast. I have been starting YouTube since 2019, and I've been dibbling and dabbling in there, creating content, making videos, doing vlogs, all the things, but I haven't been consistent. And I think I've been inconsistent on YouTube because one, I haven't found my footing, or maybe I feel like... I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do on that platform. And two, I am looking for my community and I'm trying to find y'all, the Mixies. And I think I have started to find my community, create a gathering of people that do what I do and love what I love, but in the same token, like the other things that I like to do and dibble and dabble in as far as like extracurricular activities, health and wellness, adventures, not just specifically grooming. But you know, I'm going to give you a little backstory on why I created my YouTube channel and why now I have decided to create a podcast. So let's start at the beginning of my YouTube journey. It started in 2019 and I started my very first, well, no, not started, but I entered my very first grooming competition with my dog, Jackson. He's a Shih Tzu Poodle. And I don't know what prompted me to want to enter this grooming competition, but I've been in my grooming career for quite some time around that time. I feel like Hmm, 2019? Yeah, it was like almost 10 years that I've been grooming. So I guess I was like, now is the time. It's now or never kind of thing. So yeah, I decided to enter a grooming competition. And the first grooming competition that I entered was Intergroom in Secaucus, New Jersey. And it's a wild full circle moment because this year I will be competing again. By the time this comes out, I've already done the competition, so I'll make another video on how that went, or I'll do another episode, I should say, because I'm checking y'all out on the visuals on YouTube, so hey, what's up? Hey, Mixies. And um, if you're listening on audio, then I will give you another episode on how that went and my competition journey. But back to how I started YouTube. So yeah, I entered Intergroom and I didn't realize that Intergroom has a plethora of, ooh, sorry, <laughs> the mic, I have to be careful with this mic, y'all. <laughs> this is gonna be so interesting as the first episode, but I feel like it needs to stay in here to keep it authentic and true to how my journey of the podcast is gonna start. But regardless, um. I didn't realize that in this particular 
competition that I entered, it was the Rising Star Mentor entry. There was like a subcategory in this competition called First Timers Award. And that was sponsored by Foxy Roxy Supply Company, which I then became an ambassador to that. But I'm jumping the gun, y'all. All of this will be going through in other episodes. So don't worry, I will give you full information on that. But I just need to give you, the, I need to set the tone on how this is going, right? So yeah, I entered the Rising Star Mentor entry and... In that entry, there was a subcategory, First Timers Award. I'm on stage and because you're on this platform with a whole bunch of other contestants and we're all on grooming tables or individual grooming tables, I should say, but up on a, a platform. So I'm looking around because I've never done this before and I'm just like seeing what's out there, like who's here, do I know anybody? And it was very interesting that I only saw me and another, like an older woman that was black. And I'm like, hmm, interesting. Why aren't there any black people on this stage other than me and another person? And then I looked out in the audience and then didn't really see that many black people in the audience. I did see black people, like, let's let's be serious. I was in North Jersey. People, black people are present and accounted for. Hello, I was there. So was the other woman. But it was very interesting to me that the people of color was very scarce, if you will. So entered the competition, competed in the competition. I actually won. I won, not the whole con- competition entirely, but I won the first timers award, y'all. I was ecstatic. I'll go into detail in another video, in another episode, when I talk about the grooming competition journey. But I won my very first competition that day in that grooming competition, subcategory, whatever you may call it and I won with my dog like that is crazy to me but I was so excited I got critiques because in this particular competition there are judges that are you know well-renowned judges and um, grooming competitors on in their own right and they've been doing it for like 20 plus years and so they were able to give some feedback some contrast some constructive criticism (laughs) a little tongue twister right there and um things to perfect your grooms you know going further if you wanted to compete again right so got my critiques they were really good critiques I needed to tweak a little bit here and there but I knew that because I was like I've never done this before but it's good to get some feedback from professionals who've been in the game for a minute and have been in grooming competitions well more than I have obviously so after I got my critiques I went over to the other black woman because you know it was just me and her and I asked her some questions I was like hey have you been in grooming competitions before and she was just like oh yeah I've been in tons like so many and I was just like oh that's so awesome like have you won any and she was just like no and I was just like well have you gotten any critiques like from the judges? And she was like, yeah, I got some here and there. And I was like, well, do you think they were like fair and constructive? She was like, oh, I always appreciate the judges giving their feedback and, you know, their constructive criticism. Um, but, you know, that's just what it is, constructive criticism. And then I perfect what I need to perfect and move along accordingly, you know? And I was just like, yeah, why do you think, like, you haven't won anything? Or, like, why do you think that? You know, I was just very curious. And she looked down at her hands, looked at me, and looked to the side, one side to the other. And she kind of had a smirk on her face. She had a little chuckle, right? And in that very moment, 
I already understood what she was. I was picking up what she was putting down, if that makes sense. And if it doesn't make sense, it it was more so, uh, girl, you know why I didn't win. Or you know why I haven't won any competitions or gotten any, you know, positive not to say that her she was saying that her critiques weren't positive but there was a reason in her mind that she hasn't won any competitions and she's been doing this for a while she said she's been in many competitions so that got me curious right I went home and I started going on YouTube and I started looking up dog groomers or dog grooming tutorials right kept scrolling kept scrolling haven't seen not one black person on any of the videos right so then I did a more specific search and I typed in black dog groomers black groomers just black groomers black dog groomers like stuff like that when I tell you I was scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and all I saw was one woman with maybe three videos she had a youtube channel and at this time i do not remember what her youtube channel was or what her name was but she had about maybe three videos on dog grooming and the one that i saw in particular that was maybe like a 45 minute video was her grooming a black russian terrier and i was like Is this what's going on? Is this how people are learning if they can't go to seminars, if they can't go to grooming expos or grooming competitions? Is this what my people, my black community are looking at and finding no one like them except for this one woman on YouTube? And this was 2019, y'all. So it got me so like, not angry but more frustrated in the fact that there wasn't anyone like me out there there wasn't anyone like me there wasn't anyone like the woman that I spoke to at the competition there wasn't any of us on a larger platform or online to get feedback on or to you know find similarity so you could continue to educate yourself online you know what I'm saying so I said to myself people say all the time be the change you want to see and that's what I did I started a YouTube channel and I started what did I start I'm trying to figure out what my first video was I think my first video was like an introduction to myself of who I was and what I did and my business and stuff like that because then at that time um was I yeah I was already left I already left PetSmart and I was like yeah I need to start doing something so other people can see that like Black people can be groomers too, you know? So I just started my YouTube channel and kept going, kept going. I mean, kept going until now. It's 2024. So obviously I kept on doing what I felt was right at that moment. And I wanted to give hope to other Black groomers to let them know that, hey, you could do it too. I'm not the only person out here who's thinking the same thing that y'all are probably thinking, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, it was very, it was very eye-opening for me to create a change in the grooming industry, especially for Black groomers. So that is my YouTube journey, but It doesn't even begin at my YouTube journey. It actually begins further than that. When I was a kid, honestly. Let me get my notes to make sure I'm going to be going in chronological order without me like being all over the place because I don't want y'all getting confused as I'm telling these stories because yes, it's about me, but at the same time, like you got to know where I started to know where I'm going if that makes sense. Um, the Okay, so I really have about 
I want to say over a hundred videos for YouTube and it's a mixture of, <laughs> get it, mixture. It is a mixture of vlogs, tutorials, reviews, uh, just everyday days in the life's weekly vlogs of me grooming, stuff like that. And I feel like I need to keep going so I can give more expertise. I can give more advice on being a business owner, running your own grooming business, entrepreneurial advice and tips and things like that. So yeah, I like, I feel like I'm fine tuning my YouTube channel, but still being authentically me. And that's what I love about YouTube or just social media platforms in general. You get to be who you want to be, but still bring something to the table if that's what you want to do. And that's why I'm doing my YouTube channel and I'm doing this podcast because yeah, I, I could be forgetful and have notes in my, in my tablet, but still give you my story, give you my journey, because this might resonate with somebody who is thinking, hey, do I want to start a podcast about grooming? Or hey, do I want to start my own grooming business? Or hey, do I want to be in competitions? And I'm here to tell you, yes, you can. You absolutely can. So let me, again, like I said, let me uh, retrace my notes to make sure I am going in the right path. (laughs) because <laughs> child I'm all over the place so bear with me okay I'm on the right track like I said my grooming journey doesn't just start at like starting a YouTube channel it doesn't even start at like grooming and starting to be a groomer at PetSmart it starts as a itty bitty little CC. so let me take you back to memory lane um on my childhood journey of loving dogs and animals. So I grew up with dogs all my life. My grandmother had a St. Bernard mix. I feel like it was a St. Bernard like collie mix. His name was Burgess and I called him Burgie for short. And this dog was so big that my grandmother allowed me to get on his back and like ride him around like a little miniature pony like he was my own personal pony and he was so gentle so sweet like a loving amazing amazing dog and then you know as I got older we had more dogs then I was able to have like hamsters and guinea pigs and gerbils I've had obviously tons of goldfish that die (laughs) you know you go to the carnivals and the fairs and You ask your mom, hey, can I get that goldfish? You get the goldfish. The goldfish don't last that long. Well, didn't realize that the bowl that you get the fish in, you ain't supposed to keep that. You ain't supposed to keep that bowl. You need to get a tank. You need to get filtration systems. They don't tell you that. They just like want you to buy the damn goldfish and then take it home with you and then fend for yourself. But regardless, I've had animals, tons of animals, and I even wanted to, I I didn't realize at the time until like, you know, I got older and I realized I was like, ooh, girl, you was really entrepreneurially savvy even as a little kid. So you know how your teachers do this, what do you want to be when you grow up type of assignment in school well that's what one of my was it kindergarten no it had to be like if it wasn't kindergarten it was first grade right so the teacher tells all of us to draw what you want to be when you grow up and what I drew is a half of a fish and then a half of a dog bone as a building right And so the building had three levels, like, yeah, three floors. The first floor was a dog grooming um, shop, right? Groom your dogs there. The second floor was a veterinary hospital or like 
a, a veterinary clinic in the on the second floor, right? And then the third floor was a hair salon for the pet parents. So my idea in my head was you go take your dog, your cat, whatever the case may be, you go take them to go get groomed and pampered. And now if anything is wrong with your dog or cat while they're there, or do you, if you need to give your dog and, and cat a, a checkup, you can go there to the vet clinic and then get your dog or cat pampered and, you know, look glamorous at the pet shop, right? The grooming shop. And then while you're waiting for your dog or your cat to get a checkup or to get their hair did, you could go upstairs and get your hair did. Didn't even think that that was like so entrepreneurial of me, but like that was my thought process. Now, did I want to be an entrepreneur? No, I wanted to be a veterinarian, but did I put that on? What do I want to be when I grow up? No, but I had the idea of like, I want a vet clinic in this three tiered half fish, half dog bone building of some sorts. I don't know why, but that's what I thought of. Right. So going, you know, grow, growing up. And then I graduated and I wanted to be a vet. So I applied to a vet school in, in Philadelphia. There is the school USP university of the science of Philadelphia. And they had a veterinary program. I wanted to go to that school and that school only. I had no other interest to go to any other school. I was like, I'm going to get into this school. I'm going to be a vet. I'm going to make so much money. Um, This is my dream. You know, like that was the goal. That was the plan. Well, my SAT scores had other plans for me because they were not up to par for me to even get into this school. They looked at my SAT scores and they said, oh, girl, try again this ain't the school for you I was devastated but luckily I was able to get a scholarship at the college that I went to which is Chestnut Hill and that was in Chestnut Hill or that was in Philly and Philadelphia Pennsylvania for those who aren't aware of where Philly is so yeah went to Chestnut Hill school had a major in biology and a minor in marine biology slash zoology and then I learned as much as I needed to learn while I was you know working part-time at a retirement home as like a server for like it was a very fancy retirement facility because it was more so like a retirement community because they had their own houses and then they had their own apartments but like they can come for brunch breakfast lunch and dinner and bring their family kind of like a restaurant but it was you know in the facility but regardless I was working part-time there part-time at PetSmart working in the uh, small animal department and I'm just trying to get by while being a full-time student at school so I'm just like keeping up with learning things about being like a biologist or a botanist, I guess. Um, and just, you know, improving my skills and knowing all the things about like zoology. Cause then I was just like, well, maybe I can be a marine biologist and I can travel the world, go to the Amazon, do some research, see cool things, go check out the coral reefs. Like I had a whole new idea, right? But I ain't got that type of money. I'm still working two jobs and full-time in school. So fast forward, I leave school my junior year and I'm like, oh no, no, no. It was, it was my senior year, I feel like. And I think I had one more semester. Did I? Actually, no, I, it was, I left on my junior year and I had a year left. I didn't have no more money to pay for school. So I said, I'm going to dip out. (laughs) I'm going to dip out and go back home and work. So I left school, worked at um, an animal hospital. And 
there I was like working kind of overnights, like helping administer medications to the dogs and the cats that were being boarded at that hospital. And that was kind of my, my little way of wanting to pursue my veterinary dreams, if you will. And it was pretty cool. Like I got to make sure I administer medications properly. I made sure I knew how to administer shots for like insulin and things like that. So I was obviously they taught me because the vet techs made sure that I did it properly. And they were pretty easy, um, you know, medications to give them. It was pills that you had to put in pill pockets or syringe, like, um, you know, liquid medication that you put in the syringe and then you administer it orally to the cats or the dogs. And I just took the dogs out to make sure that they used the bathroom instead of using the bathroom in the kennels that they were in. So I learned a little thing or two about that, which was pretty cool. And then I was still working two jobs because I had to, you know, I had to pay these bills, honey. Okay. That's, that's just what it was. And I was working there and I was working at PetSmart part-time. As I was actually, I'm sorry, let me, let me rewind. (laughs) I was still in school when I went back home because I couldn't afford to be on campus anymore. That's what it was. So I went back home. Still, I was working at another PetSmart in Jersey where my parents live. And I was working at the vet hospital as well. So your girl was exhausted, just tired, just trying to take naps in between like me going to school and like having to work at the hospital for a couple hours. And then I got to take a nap and then I would work the night shift that, um, where did I work at that time? Burlington Coat Factory, which is now Burlington. But, um, yeah, I was trying to figure out sleep patterns in between school and two jobs. So one day I was very tired and, was working on homework and trying to get the energy to stay up and stay alert while I was still at work. (laughs) And one of the vet techs was being a snitch, a snitch of a snitch of a snitch, and saw that I took a little quick nap, a quick cat nap, if you will, on one of the dryers in the in the um, kennel, the boarding area. And honestly, I was, I used to do that when no one was there because I worked night shift. I happened to work while everyone was still there and I was just tired because being a full-time student, working two jobs, that takes a toll on your girl, right? So I took a quick cat nap. She told my supervisor, My supervisor, she brought me in the office and she was just like, come to my attention that you're sleeping on the job. So I'm going to have to let you go. And I said, okay, I mean, this happened, like, this is the only time you see me do this. Can you give me a, can I get a warning? She said, this is your warning. I was like, this isn't my warning because you're firing me. This isn't a warning at all. So I took it as, you know what, this is a sign I don't need to be here anymore, right? So, oh my gosh, I said that I was working at PetSmart when I was doing this. I'm sorry, y'all. Like, everything got so jumbled together while I was in school that I had so many jobs. Honestly, I was like a slave, y'all. I was just a slave to work, but I needed to make that money. And I was, I'm not a person that is going to complain about working. So, yeah, your girl had many, many jobs. But, I was working at Burlington Co. Factory while I was working at the animal hospital. So once I got fired from the vet hospital, I got the job at PetSmart as a bather. That's where it all went down. So I was a bather and I was like, oh my gosh, I love this. This is perfect. This is my dream job. Like I get to hang out and play with dogs all day. So you think. 
so you think but it's actually hard work which i'm not like i just said i am not going to be you know oh like feeling a type of way for working hard i'm like i've been working since i was 14 years old i am not a i'm not amidst of getting a job and working hard for it so I was very good at my job. I loved bathing dogs and it was, it didn't seem like hard work for me. It just seemed like something that I like to do, enjoy to do. And, you know, I got paid for it. So my salon manager slash mentor at the time, she came up to me and she was like, you know, you're really good at that. You should go to grooming academy and be a groomer. And I said, oh, girl, uh -uh, that's not what I want to come and do. Like, I don't want to be a groomer. I see how the groomers get treated by these clients. And they're a little bit rude and a little bit picky. When it's me and just washing and brushing these dogs out, oh, I don't have to do much. Do their nails, clean their ears, brush them out, make them smell good. And I'm about my business. And I walk away and I get paid and I, you know, I clock out and that's it, right? She was just like, you would be really good at it. You're so good at the bathing the dogs. You should be a groomer. So I'm just like, girl, leave me alone about this grooming business. I don't want to be a groomer. I don't want to be nobody groomer, okay? She would not let up, y'all. She would continue. She would continue to ask me over and over and over again. And so... I said to her one day, just to shut you up, I'll go to your stupid academy, okay? And I don't know, this must have been a blessing in disguise because I got the opportunity to, because PetSmart does grooming academies in, like, in-house in a sense. Like, you can go in your salon, in your, um, at your store, or you can go to another store and be trained by another grooming academy trainer, right? But luckily, my salon manager, she was a grooming academy teacher at our salon in our shop. So I didn't have to go anywhere. And she, at the time that I started, she had over 16 years of experience so she was very thorough and she taught like very very well she was very um detailed and thorough so I had no problems with learning how to groom I picked it up very quickly and yeah I mean my grooms weren't great to start off because I'm like just learning and try to figure it out and I'm not trying to be scared while using scissors around like live animals you know what I'm saying so at first they weren't the best but I got better and I got continued to get better after I left grooming academy you're supposed to um complete a hundred dog breeds now obviously I'm not going to get all different types of dog breeds because not all different types of breeds of dogs come in, in and out of our salon. So we get to create the breed cut on any type of dog. We take a picture and then they show you, and they approve if you did the breed cut correctly or not. So um, it took me maybe like three months to do the 100 dogs. I can't remember at this time, but I know it wasn't, it didn't take too too long but it wasn't like a hundred dogs was gonna get done in a month like nah it took me like maybe about three months for me to get the hundred dogs done and then you know I was getting in the groove of things and I started to become faster and better and my personality brought in more clients so I became one of the top groomers in my salon and I was considered a power groomer which means that you can groom like multiple dogs in a day like very quickly which then I realized 
as years went by that being a power groomer ain't all it's cracked up to be because that could lead to burnout baby and don't nobody want that and of course I will talk about that in another episode but yeah I was one of the top groomers in my salon and a power groomer but at that certain point in time of my grooming career I was hitting 10 years and I felt like I was hitting a glass ceiling because I was making more than my salon manager my um my salon manager that was my academy trainer she got promoted to become um something better in corporate and started training like a whole bunch of other groomers and a whole bunch of other trainers so now she does like um elite competitions for PetSmart and so she she on a whole nother ball game right so another uh another groomer came in to be a salon manager and um she only groomed like four dogs a day and we got paid off of commission baby when I tell you I made more than my salon manager and then they wanted me to be a salon manager I was like the math ain't math and sis i don't think that's beneficial. I didn't come here to manage people. I came here to groom dogs. So you only want me to groom four dogs because I could only, the max of a salon manager at PetSmart at the time, I don't know what it is now. Y'all work at PetSmart or corporate, y'all let me know in the comments. Or leave me a review and you let me know if it's different. But at that time, you could uh, groom max of four dogs a day and then obviously you had to deal with paperwork and managing the salon and the the groomers or the team and I said I didn't want to do that I'm not here to babysit nobody I'm here to groom dogs and do it very well so I left at my 10 year mark and excuse me then I decided to um start my own business with a friend of mine that worked at PetSmart with me in the same salon. She left, I think, I want to say not a year before me, but like a few months before me, like maybe six months before me. And she already, like, she happened to start the business on her own. And I was just like, I need to do something else, something different. So as she was trying to start her own grooming business, she went to a private shop and she told me, she was like, hey, you can come over here and you can get the flexibility and the freedom to like groom at the private shop versus having, you know, kind of being stifled and like corporate is very stuffy, if you will, versus a private shop is more relaxed and, um, like she said, you get more flexibility, more time freedom. So I said, oh, yeah, I could do that. That sounded like something right down my alley. So that's what I did. I went over to the private shop and worked with her and our manager there liked what we did. We were bringing in more customers for them because it was only two other girls. And then our our manager or the salon owner of the shop. She was doing dogs from time to time, but they weren't making that much and they weren't bringing that much uh, clientele in. So when me and my friend at the time came there, it started booming, honey. It was just so many dogs were coming there. Mind you, so many dogs were coming there because one, I, my clientele from PetSmart followed me to the other shop. And so... A friend told a friend told a friend and that's just how word got out and then people just started coming to the private shop but we also told our the owner of the private shop that we were starting our own business like we already had dogs aligned and we were traveling to them but we needed to get a bus or, or like a mobile van and we did we were able to get a mobile van and it was a mini school bus actually it wasn't a van a van it was a mini school bus i will talk about that in another episode but that was something that started picking up and we made it 
very clear that we were starting our own business, but we weren't going to interfere with her business. She was like, yeah, do what you need to do. Just don't take my customers. And we were very firm on that. Like we weren't going to do that. Now, is that going to happen to everybody every time? Absolutely not. This is just my story. And this is just what, how it went for me. And we just caught a break. So that was happening while we were simultaneously building our own business. But our the private owner of the shop she didn't really want to groom anymore and she didn't really want to run her business anymore so she offered the shop to us she offered us to buy it off of her and her husband and take over we were very intrigued by this and we were like maybe we can make this like a, a mobile private conglomerate of some sorts right and so we were talking, we we had meetings with her, we talked to a lawyer, she started pulling up like business plans and um, a contract and stuff like that. But as we were doing more research and we were looking into it a little bit further, comes to find out she wanted us to pay her debt off in a sense. Like we would buy her shop but we would still have to work in it to pay off the loan of what she was paying for her shop. I said, oh no, I'm not paying nobody's loan off while I'm still working and slaving. If I'm going to buy somebody's shop, I'm going to be the manager and that's all I'm going to be. I'm not going to be no groomer. I'm not going to work in the shop while still managing the shop. That's too much. That's stressful. And then manage other people when some people don't want to go and work. We was like, nah, that don't seem right. So we decided to nix that situation. And then our mobile grooming business was picking up a lot after that. And so after we were like, okay, we have to pick one. We decided to leave her. We, we said we can't do both. We decided we're just going to continue with grooming on our own. And we did that pretty well for two years. And then the pandemic happened. Wait, no, it wasn't two years. It was only one year because that was 2019. Yep. Because 2018, actually, I'm wrong. <laughs> See, I'm telling y'all, I'm trying to get these dates together. But like, this has been so long of a journey that like dates and times kind of escape me. So bear with me on the, the time frame. but we got the mini school bus in 2018. We were still working at the private shop in 2018, but then we finally got enough clients to be like, okay, we can't do both. So we decided, all right, we're going to leave the private shop and go full time in the, um, the mobile, uh, what? <laughs> the mobile grooming business. So yeah, we did that for two years and then the pandemic happened and then our bus kind of broke down on us like many, many times throughout those two years and then we had to keep on putting money into it and it was kind of burning a hole in our pockets and it broke down for the last time while we were, you know, stuck in the house during the pandemic and we were in a able to be out and about because we weren't considered essential until like two weeks later which was great for us because we were only out of work for two weeks that's not the worst thing you know other than what we know other people had to go through so we were really really grateful but we were like well, now what now what do we do we went from being a mobile grooming business to not having a mobile grooming unit and now we are stuck in the house but like people still want us to come and groom their dogs so we had to do a pivot we had to make a shift we decided to do house calls and it was a little tricky because some people are like a little leery because hello a pandemic and there's this thing going around that no one really knows what it is and I get it I would be cautious too but we you know made our proper precautions. We even allowed some people to come to our house and we groomed the dogs at our apartment. 
which was very cool and interesting at the same time. You have to you have to figure out some things, even if there's someone telling you you couldn't do that or you shouldn't do that. Where there's a will, there's a way. And I'm always going to figure out a way to make some money, honey. OK, legally, by the way, legally <laughs> and morally sound. But yeah, so went from that having a mobile grooming business to pivoting to house calls and we went to people's houses and that started to work. That was actually becoming very lucrative and more and more people were like, can you come to my house? Can you come to my house? Can you come to my house? And we're like, yeah, we can do this. So we made that a thing and we changed our business from mobile grooming to house calls. Then my business partner and friend, you know, we had situations where we had to cut ties. She moved and she gave the business to me. And then I was just stuck with a whole business by myself trying to figure out how to run it by myself. And I made it work because guess what? Now I'm here today talking to y'all about grooming and a grooming podcast my journey from a child to running my own grooming business by myself as a house call groomer I rebranded my myself I rebranded my business and I'm doing great I'm making a lot of money I've got a whole bunch of newer clients and I'm helping other groomers do the same thing, try to run their business, try to make a business happen. And even if they don't want to make a business happen, they want to learn how to groom. I'm doing that too. So I'm starting mentoring one-on-one, um, you know, just inquiries and just feedback. And I'm learning how to create a course. Like I'm doing all these things all because I kind of didn't want to be a groomer but I knew I had a passion of like loving animals and loving dogs and I'm here today to talk to you about it it's like a wild crazy journey so yeah I had to tell you all of that to tell you where I'm at today and I'm here talking to y'all about starting this grooming podcast that I've been waiting for years to start and I didn't know how it was going to go. I didn't know the flow of like how this process was going to be, but I knew it was going to be something that I enjoyed talking about because I love what I do. I love making dogs look and feel great. I love teaching things that I've been doing for years I have little tips and tricks that I do on my own that some people don't even do or some people don't even know how to do I just ah, you got to pick up things and obviously I learn other things from other you know pet professionals uh friends of mine that are dog groomers like all that that whole spiel oh my gosh I didn't even tell you in the midst of all of that during the pandemic I was on a TV show. I was on, I was um, able to travel to California during the pandemic and be in a grooming competition TV show called Hot Dog on HBO Max. I don't know if it's still on HBO Max, but it's streaming out there on the internet streets. So um, if you want to check it out, it's called Hot Dog, H-A-U-T-E, Dog. I am on the first season. I think it's the only season, honestly. I think they tried to cut it up in two sections, but made it one season. I don't know, child. I'm on episode five, where the wild things bark. If you're interested, I will leave it in the show notes um, down in the description for you. If you want to know um, what show I was on. I don't really talk about it. That's why I totally forgot to tell you guys, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it's me being humble, but I don't really like to brag about stuff that I have done. Cause I'm like, oh yeah, you know, if I could do it, you could do it kind of thing. But not everybody can go and travel to California during the pandemic and be in the TV show, showing your skill set. So yeah, did that too, but 
All in all, I just want to create this podcast to give you my feedback, give you my knowledge, give you my expertise, give you a little bit of fun because that's what I'm all about. I am a very bubbly, energetic, outgoing black girl that just likes to have fun and groom dogs and play with dogs all day and interact with other people. So like, I love to get feedback from my mixies. I call y'all my mixies. The reason why I called this mixed thoughts is because my social media platforms, there's mixed clips. And what that means is I'm a mixed chick with a mixture of clips. I do a mixture of things. I groom a mixture of dog breeds. I have a mixture of hobbies and things that bring me joy. So mixed clips, just a mixture of clips and fun things. So why not combine everything I love into one, you know? But yeah, um, let me make sure that I got through everything, all my notes and explained everything to y'all in this first episode. (laughs) This might be a really long one, but like, if you've stuck with me this long, thank you. I appreciate you. It doesn't go unnoticed. And it is very humbling to know that like someone is listening to me out there. Even if it's one person, if it's one of you mixies out there, thank you so much. I appreciate you to no end. You have no idea how like grateful I am that I get the opportunity to share my journey share my thoughts, share my love and passion of dogs and things like that to the world, to y'all, to my community. So that's what I want to keep on doing. But here's the goal of this podcast. It is to educate, enlighten, uplift, and motivate through my experiences, whether it be good or bad. The life of a dog groomer, (laughs) all aspects and all facets of me being a a groomer, because I've been all types of groomers except for um, a vet groomer and a, what's the other one? No, that's the only one I I haven't been. I have done corporate salon, private salon, mobile grooming, house call grooming, and that's it. Are there other ones? If there are other ones, let me know. I'm pretty sure. Excuse me. That's pretty much all the ones that I've done. <laughs> um, But yeah, I'm like I've been telling you, I'm, I'm going to be running through a plethora of topics like health and wellness, entrepreneurial tips and tricks. Um, I'm going to be getting advice from other guests. It's not just going to be me on here. I know y'all might be like, oh, girl, you got the personality, honey. We'll hear. We're here to hear from you. I love that. And I want you to be here to hear me. But I also want you to hear from other pet care professionals and people who like have knowledge on things that I don't because I'm not a veterinarian. I'm not a vet tech. I'm not uh, a holistic groomer. You know, I... There's things that I don't know, and that's okay because I'm a forever learner. I will always be learning my craft. I will always be learning new things because you should always learn new things so you can evolve and be greater and better than your past self, you know? So be on the lookout for new guests. Not new, but some are new. Some are new to me. Some are new to you. But I'm going to have some guests on here and I'm just going to have a good key key with y'all and with my guests. And we just going to, you know, just talk about all the things that bring me joy and should bring you joy too. Um, What else? Yeah, that's pretty much all that I'm going to be talking about. I'm just, I'm just honored that I have the opportunity to do what I love to do, which is create art through dog hair. Like I get to be creative and I get to be caring and loving and just show my craft, my art through dog hair. It's just the best of both worlds, honestly. And I'm just, it, it was it was just a gift from God 
or the universe or whoever that my salon manager kept on badgering me to be a groomer because if she didn't keep on pushing me and pushing me and pushing me and me to be so annoyed to tell her just to shut you up yes I will go I wouldn't be here today probably talking to you about my grooming journey I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you about how I run my own house call grooming business and how I'm about to with the help of this podcast and the help of my community, my mixies, and the help of my clients, that I'm going to get a mobile grooming van. I'm going to go back to mobile, hopefully this year by the summertime, but none of that would be possible without the help and support of a community. So that's why I'm doing this, y'all, because you two can do whatever it is that you want to do. You have to just start and take a chance on yourself. So... I think I have talked your ear off at this point and uh, thank you for staying till the end because this was a very, very interesting episode. Um, I might keep most of that. We'll see. We'll see how the edit goes and we'll see how the audio and everything else goes. But um, brush your dog, y'all. This is a lovely shirt that I got at one of the expos last year and um the makers of these shirts and other really cute shirts like this is uh, called Groomer Girls. If I have their information, I'll make sure to put it in the show notes, in the description, and all the all the things. Um, yeah, stay tuned for more episodes. I am batching out a whole bunch of uh, videos and and episodes so y'all can get to see and hear this every week um I'm gonna see how long I can do that like how many videos I can record and how many scripts I can make uh, within like a few weeks because I want to make sure I stay consistent and I want to make sure that y'all get what y'all deserve which is some good content, some informative content and some funny content too. So thank you all for watching this uh, video, this podcast. I was about to say this YouTube channel. I mean, it is going to be on my YouTube channel in the podcast section. So thank you for watching this first podcast episode. And thank you for whoever is listening on the DSPs right now. Thank you for listening to this Very, very interesting and just authentic episode. I appreciate every single one of you for watching and listening. And I cannot wait to talk to you next week. Have a great one.